What's up guys, this is TechnoCube and you are watching Mobile Computing Fundamentals. Well, you see, in this session we are going to understand a layered architecture. And we have two layered architecture. One is known as TCP IP and the other one is OSI layer. Right, OSI is Open System Interconnection. Well, in this session we are going to understand TCP IP protocol suit. The difference is, is that TCP possess four layers whereas OSI layer possess seven layers. And also the difference is OSI is the newest version of layered architecture that we will we are using it. But the TCP IP it is the earlier version and most probably you know there are not, not many applications which uses TCP IP protocol suit. Okay, so we can understand see these are the four layers which you can see here there is host to network, internet layer, transport layer and application layer. Now we can understand each and every layer one by one. So I'm going to start with host to network layer. So the problem here in host to network layer is we don't have any protocol inside this layer. So we don't have any new protocol. So if there is no protocol, we are not going to understand it, right? <laughs> so we will start with the internet layer. What, what exactly is internet layer? So internet layer, it, it possesses some protocols and we precisely going to understand what are these, these protocols. So internet layer here. So the first protocol is, or oh, I am going to list it down all the protocols. The first layer is IP. The second protocol is it going to is going to be ICMP. Then we have IGMP. Then we have R protocol, and then we have ARP protocol. You see, these are the main protocols. So I am going to abbreviate it here. So this is internetworking. Internetworking protocol. Then this one is Internet Control Message Protocol. Internet Control Message Protocol. The same thing is with IGMP, which is Internet Group Message Protocol. So this is Group Message Protocol. The RARP or ARP is Address. Resolution protocol and RARP is nothing but a reverse address resolution protocol. Now we're going to understand these these protocols which come and exist in the internet layer. Okay, so we'll start with the IP layer. Uh, sorry, IP uh, this protocol and IP is known as internet protocol. And I hope you already known. Uh, you are very familiar with this protocol it is it gives you the logical addressing system which in terms of your ip address which is 16 bit here and 16 bit here which can be distinguished by network address here on this side and the host address on this side which is a 32 bit addressing mechanism which is also known as logical addressing well this logical addressing uniquely identify you over the internet so it will identify it will identify you in the internet so this is going to be our internet so here if you are working with some something then there is a possibility that we need to identify or there, there must be some unique identification whenever you are, you use internet and that thing can be done with the help of this logical addressing and in, in that term it is known as IP. I hope you get you are getting it and you are very familiar with this you know protocol. Uh, the next protocol is going to be ICMP. So ICMP which is internet control message protocol. Well this protocol exactly gives you something called as error reporting message. Error reporting message. Well, the best example of error reporting message is your ping host unreachable message. So the example here, example is host unreachable message in the ping command and you had seen this so many times. So let me start my command prompt and I will show you. So if I make a ping google.com then it will give you the 
echo request and echo response in terms of this four packets right now if i do something like ping googles dot com then you will see that it will it will tell you that uh, let me write it down in some um just like this maybe it will not give you the uh, the it will show you yeah see there is this request timeout and then it gives you the reply so there is this type of you know error request or the error response you can see request timeout it is a kind of error notifying message uh, which comes from the ICMP these types of messages actually return or it has been noted down in the ICMP uh, Protocol and from there it is showing you in the command prompt. Okay, so this is the work of ICMP It will give you all types of error notifying messages. Okay, so now the other one is IGMP which is a kind of a group messaging protocol which is specifically used for or if I write it down facilitates it facilitates simultaneous transmission of a message so it is a kind of broadcast message which you are sending to your you know complete group so this is your icmp and the igmp i hope you are getting it now let's understand the other protocol that is RARP and ARP which is address resolution protocol and the reverse address resolution protocol. Let's understand it. So I'm going to write here ARP that is your address resolution protocol. Now what ha exactly happens in RARP is the protocol or this protocol is having your IP address. So it possesses. let me write it down here. It possess your IP address it have, but it doesn't possess. It doesn't possess your MAC address. This is the problem here. So it, it is having the IP address, but doesn't have the MAC address. So ARP, this address resolution protocol, the work of this protocol is to find the MAC address you know the work is nothing but just to find the MAC address find MAC address so this is the work of ARP now how exactly it can be happened let's say I have a user here who is having the ARP or not the ARP but just, it just want to find the MAC address so it, is, it will it will going to use this protocol so it possesses the ARP and this computer is connected with other bunches of computer so let me have uh, this computer here, this computer here, this is, and this is. So this is one, then two, then three, and then four. And let me have the unique IP addresses of, you know, four computers. So let me write it down 17 or 176.12.13.4. And this is going to be 172.16. Uh, sorry, this is 12.13. Three and this is going to be dot two and this is going to be one. Now this uh, this person wants to connect with you know uh, wants to connect with some IP address who is which is this one. So but he doesn't doesn't have doesn't know about the MAC address. So this ARP message or the packet that is going to be forwarded or that is going to be broadcast. So the broadcast packet is going to be written as who is having who is sorry who is 172. Oh, sorry 176.12.13.4 till it's something like this this is the you know this is the actual uh, message that is going to be broadcast so it is going to be broadcast here broadcast here broadcast here broadcast here and whosoever will see that you know whosoever ha ha has this IP address 176.12.13.4 will going to be reply in a unicast message to this person that I have this IP address and this is my MAC address and other will discard the complete you know packet so it will check the IP addresses and then based on the IP address it will reply in a unicast form their MAC address and then they can communicate with each other okay you are getting this this is the R now R A R P here 
reverse address resolution protocol what exactly happened it is having or it has mac address has mac address but has not or have not the ip address this is the problem so the work of our arp is to find the ip address this is the work of our arp now there are some practical you know see scenarios that you had seen where our arp is going to help you like when you purchase your complete new computer you know that particular or that complete new device has the mac address you had seen it right but it is not yet connected to any network that's why that computer doesn't have any ip addresses and that's why the, the, on that scenario we have the rarp which will ask the dhcp to give some ip address to, to this newly computer uh, which is connected to the network so this is the work of rarp which which will allocate you or not allocate it will give you the ip address or it will find you the ip address uh, from the pool okay based on the mac addresses this is the work of rarp this is the first case the second case whenever you completely format your computer in that case also there is no ip address um, so it, it only possesses the mac address but when you connect to some network then dhcp dynamic host control protocol will give you or will allocate you some ip address or if you have the static ip address you go to the network setting put some ip addresses dns records and there you go you are in the network so this is the work of our arp i hope you are getting it okay so now let's understand the next layer which is the transport layer so the transport layer i will write it down here transport layer they possess two protocol one is known as tcp ip and other one is udp user datagram protocol and transport control or transmission control protocol okay this is the uh, two protocol so let's understand uh, bit by bit so the first point here in the in the tcp it is it it is that it is connection oriented service it is having connection oriented service but here in the udp it says it is connectionless what do you mean by connection oriented and connectionless is that that tcp whenever you want to uh, use some application which is based on the tcp then it has to uh, establish a connection before transmission of any data so the establish establishment is based on three way handshake so let me point it down that this is a three way handshake this is three way handshake and based on that your connection oriented works but there is no facility of you know this connection oriented but it is a direct connection uh, in terms of you, uh, whenever you talk about udp okay it doesn't need any kind of a connection establishment um, so for an example tcp the best example is your browser whenever you surf your internet you know it first create a uh, the tcp or or you can say three way handshake and then it will connect to the website or connect to the service here connection less in the udp you have the best example as the ping command or the dns command okay ping command doesn't need any kind of request and response so if you see here i will directly write ping.google.com and you will see it will directly give you the responses it will not take much time but wherever where, where is if you work with a tcp then you know it will take some time because it, it it is using so it guarantees it guarantees delivery of a data guarantees delivery of data to destination okay whereas if you if you talk about udp then there is no functionality which gives you the guarantee there is no guarantee at all the other difference is uh, the other differences let me write it in the new, new page so the other difference is tcp here and the udp here other differences is that tcp it is having the advantage but the problem here is tcp is slow 
why it is slow is because you know before sending the data it have to establish the connection that's the problem so we have a slow pace here in the tcp whereas in the udp as it doesn't need to connect anything or connect stab or, or the there is no uh, establishment of uh, connection then then it turns it turns it it turns it out that it is fast okay then the other thing is it is it, it is having an extensive extensive error checking and there is no module of error checking in the UDP so there is no mechanism no mechanism of error checking other thing that uh, there is a basic error checking but uh, we generally call it as uh, you know actually UDP is having a little bit of error checking but we generally it is very min minuscule so that's why we uh, we, we generally opt it out okay so the other thing is the tcp it is having a sequencing or a sequencing module because it possesses the sequence number so we have uh, it possesses sequencing of data so sequencing of data and there is no sequencing uh, mechanism there is no sequence number it doesn't use any sequence number uh, other than that we are having a lost packet so there is a retransmission whenever there is a loss of of a packet in the tcp sequence then we retransmit it okay so tcp is having that that kind of functionality with the help of acknowledgement number and the sequence number we can retransmit the data whereas in the udp there is nothing called as retransmission so no retransmission it lost it means it is completely lost you cannot find it out so these are some of the basic difference that tcp and uh, tcp and udp is, po is is possessing okay so le let me also having some examples of you know these uh, these tcp and udp so udp is having an example as it is having dns whereas also using uses dhcp then tftp then snmp also your voice call uh, we, we generally call it as voip connections so all these possess the UDP connections. When we talk about TCP, then TCP is having HTTP or HTTPS. Then it is having SMTP for the mail transfer. Uh, so it is having STP. Then a Telnet we have. And then also we have FTP. These all are these all applications needed connection establishment before sending the data to actual destinations. So these are the example of you know the TCP and these are the example of UDP. I hope you are getting it. Okay. So the next thing is we are actually actually we are having last uh, version is the application layer. So I don't think there is a need of the application layer to uh, to make you explain. Application layer actually possess you know Telnet. Now you just need to understand how Telnet actually working. Like if I say directory services, then you need to know that what is FTP, how it is working. Then if I say the mail service, then you need, need to know about POP3, post office protocol. Then you need to understand SMTP, that is simple mail transfer protocol and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Then, uh, then there is something called as remote login that I, that I told you about, Telnet, uh, then uh, SSH and all, all those stuffs where we are remotely connecting to the server or the other computer. So these are the practical, you know, uh, application layer protocols that you can understand. So this is in general TCP IP protocol suit. I hope you are getting it. And if you have any doubt, you can you know ask me in the comment section. I'll be waiting for that and I'll be uh, really helpful. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me. And if you haven't subscribed my channel, I again insist you to please subscribe it and like, comment and share. Thank you so much.